In his book, The Protagonist's Journey, An Introduction to Character-Driven Screenwriting and Storytelling, author Scott Myers defines the trickster archetype as a capricious element which provides twists and surprises, a character which tests the will of the protagonist, most notably by shifting back and forth from ally to enemy, enemy to ally. There is a character in the Resident Evil series I believe represents this archetype well, a fan favorite you might have heard of named Ada Wong. Why is it that Ada seems to grab fan attention almost unanimously? What is it that makes her character so enticing to watch? Perhaps it's because Ada doesn't just represent one type of character, but many. Spoilers for many Resident Evil games ahead. Many of my essays focus on story structure, theme, motifs, and genre, but in this video I hope to do a brief dig into character. This video will be shorter in length, but hopefully still fun. I'm only going to reference certain pieces of the Resident Evil universe for this video, most predominantly Resident Evil 2 and a little bit of 4. To cover every facet of Ada's identity in one essay would be a heavy and maybe even convoluted undertaking, so I'm going to stick to some of the more well-known iterations. Feel free to chime in on areas and properties I might have missed in the comments. In the protagonist's journey, Myers puts great emphasis on the metamorphosis of the hero. It is, after all, the protagonists of stories who often undergo great change. However, these changes are often caused by the characters surrounding them, and Myers focuses on four other archetypes. Nemesis, no, not that nemesis, attractor, mentor, and trickster, as tests that will challenge the protagonist along their journey to understanding their true self. We could probably apply Meyer's logic to many characters in the series, some probably better than others, but I really like the idea of Ada as Trickster. She seamlessly transitions between many different identities, which makes her unique among other characters in the franchise. So, what actions or lack of does Ada take to exemplify this archetype? Let's focus on Resident Evil 2. Myers says the trickster is a shapeshifter, whose instinct is to deftly slip on or off any archetype mask at a moment's notice in order to further their goals. If it serves their needs, they can ease into and out of any character archetype at any time. Co-protagonist, nemesis, attractor, or mentor. Does Ada fit all of these dynamics? She certainly does. She wears all of these masks, as Myers calls them in his book. Who is Ada Wong? Is that even her real name? Ada is an enigma right from the start. She's proficient and confident, but also a lone operator. When we first meet her, we get the sense that she has no intention of joining a team. In the remake, she presents herself as an FBI agent, suggesting she should be an ally, but we'll soon find out she's not limited to this mask. Players who've played the first title in this series would already be tipped off to her inauthenticity if they'd paid close attention. What appeared to be a small detail in the first game amounts to a molehill in the second. Ada starts off as ally, or attractor, even if she's hesitant to be one. This is proven when she saves Leon from death at their first meeting. Though Leon is apt to work together with her, Ada isn't having it. In the remake scenario, Ada's interest lies in Ben, a reporter working to expose Umbrella and Raccoon City's officials. She strikes a deal with Leon, help me find Ben and perhaps we can help each other. Of course, this turns out to be a misdirection because Ada's motivation for finding Ben is anything but heroic. Notice that when we first meet Ada, she's wearing sunglasses. This article is a tiny little detail that tips us off to her nature right from the start. If a person's eyes are the keys to their soul, then Ada's soul is hidden behind darkness. We don't know much about Ada's past, and truthfully, I hope we never learn much more. Her obscure origins keep her character shrouded in mystery and therefore intriguing. Even the tools in her kit are a reflection of her identity. She possesses a hacking tool in the remake that allows her to bypass security measures. In later entries in the series, she utilizes a grappling hook to reach areas other characters are unable to access, which makes for quick escapes. She's also used smoke screens to obscure her getaways. Her bowgun, while not utilizing explosive arrowheads, represents the need for a stealthy attack. Every element about her character suggests rule breaking. Another little detail I love is the choice of character color, red. Remember who wore red in the prior entry? Barry, whose deception put the star's team and his own life at risk. 
It's a cool little aesthetic detail and a tip off regarding her character status within the narrative. People often call Ada a spy, and she does possess elements about her personality common with characters in spy fiction. But spies generally watch and listen, and Ada gets her hands dirty. As Annette mentions in the remake, she's also akin to a mercenary. What makes Ada a spy is not her gadgets, but her actions. Ada engages in human, or human intelligence. In the original version of the second entry, when we first meet her, she explains that she's looking for her boyfriend, an Umbrella employee who mysteriously disappeared. What was seemingly a throwaway plot element from the first game turns out to be an interesting piece of lore that has ramifications for characters that ripple throughout the series. Her ability to lie about her intentions and feign falling in love with a man so she can obtain company secrets is an act of deception. In traditional spy speak, this is called honeypotting. Speaking of lies, lies are just another theme common with the series that Ada embodies. Whether you subscribe to the original or remake version of the story, Ada's primary character function is the same. She participates in corporate espionage, another theme that is recurring through the series. Myers reminds us that the trickster is guided by their own wants and needs and can often be seen testing the will of the protagonist. So, why does Ada want Umbrella's secrets? Money? Well, I'm not so sure we ever really know much more than that. But does it matter? Maybe not. What matters is that she has an effect on Leon's character growth, and we can't talk about Ada without talking about Leon. Ada also acts briefly as mentor character, teaching Leon about Umbrella and their treacherous actions within the city. She preys on Leon's want to do good and protect the innocent by providing him with information she knows will cause him to spring into action. She warns him of the dangers of this investigation he is destined to embark on. She uses her false profile as a means to manipulate him. Pure espionage. When Leon is injured, Ada patches him up, which leans back into her ally identity. But we soon learn as the audience that her goals are not at all what we assumed they were when she pursues Annette. Annette, who functions as a sort of B-story nemesis character, knows full well that Ada isn't to be trusted. Ada and Leon's romantic relationship provides another character shift for Ada, a tractor. A kiss on the tram car confirms it. It's another tactic Ada uses to manipulate Leon into doing her dirty work for her. Myers discusses how trickster character archetypes often force the protagonist to endure a test, a complication, roadblock, or reversal which challenges the protagonist, forcing them to rely on what they have learned on their journey about the world and themselves. During deconstruction, these tests serve to break down the old ways of being, whereas in reconstruction, trickster challenges and generates opportunities for the protagonist to increasingly rely on their authentic nature. By embracing that emerging need, the protagonist moves forward in evolving into a new self. Myers says, Sometimes, however, the trickster begins as an ally only ultimately to be revealed as an enemy. So, what is Leon's test? As I mentioned in my Resident Evil 2 video, it comes in the third act when Ada confronts him. Give me the sample or die. Ada makes another transformation in this moment, specifically to that of Nemesis, even if it's a short beat. Her ability to change masks within this narrative is the trait that makes her so engaging as a character. This reversal challenges Leon, his worldview, and his ability to trust those around him. He's learned a valuable lesson in this moment about trust. Since Leon is a pure, unshakable character, he does not dare shoot Ada in this moment. Instead, he attempts to prove to her, and in turn, allow her to prove to herself that she is better than the monsters who've destroyed this city. Of course, we will never really know how Ada would have behaved in this moment, because the showdown is interrupted by the self-destruction activation sequence. We want to imagine Ada would have done the right thing, would have let her feelings for Leon get in the way of her selfish side, but we can't know for sure, and therein lies the beauty of her trickster persona. Regarding the protagonist, Myers asks, have they tapped into newfound power springing forth from within, providing them the energy to take on whatever challenges lie ahead, no matter the odds? After this fateful moment, Leon is thrust into the finale in which he must conquer hordes of Umbrella's creations, including the final form of Mr. X himself. But Ada is not done changing masks in her character archetype yet. Though we may have believed she died, a mysterious figure hidden in shadow delivers a weapon to Leon that will make his final fight with this tyrannical beast a cinch. Ada contains multitudes. She's shifted from ally to mentor, attractor, enemy, and ally all over the course of one evening. So, has Leon tapped into this newfound power? I think it's safe to say he has. 
No matter what fate Ada succumbs to, Leon will, by the end of the story, vow to stop Umbrella, a pact the two had shared in prior to her turn to Nemesis. This new world that Leon inhabits, a world of deceit and treachery, will be one that he is more prepared to endure both because of, and in spite of, his meeting with Ada. What about the post-Resident Evil 2 story? Where do we find Ada when we see her next? Well, in Europe, of course, and though Leon has changed a great deal, Ada has not. During the fourth entry, she will continue to be up to her old tricks, but now Leon will be wiser. Ada's goals are as self-serving as always, but Leon is not so easily duped now. He's grown, changed. Though fate has thrown them together again, he's hesitant to trust Ada. Leon knows she can't be trusted, but he can't help but be manipulated by her trickster shifting. Even still, she presents herself as pseudo-ally by consistently helping to keep him out of harm's way, even if their goals don't align. Despite instructions to dispose of Leon, Ada can't bring herself to do so. Perhaps she has changed a bit. In the Resident Evil 4 remake, Ada tells Leon post-Raccoon City incident, You haven't changed, you just think you have. Leon asks Ada, Have you changed Ada, or are you just trying to use me again? To which she answers, What do you think? Her answer is provided in the form of a spontaneous exit. It's an action that speaks louder than a verbal response. A great show don't tell. But is it the truth? Let's take a look at separate ways, where we gain insight into just what Ada was up to while Leon fought off legions of Las Plagas. Those trickster tactics don't just work on protagonists, they work on other characters just as well. Ada shifts archetypes around Lewis, Krauser, and Wesker when it suits her needs. Her ability to become ally and nemesis to the protagonist's own nemesis shifts her back and forth from a tractor and nemesis figure. The ending of Separate Ways provides a particularly interesting insight into her character that Leon never gets to see, but we as the audience do. Perhaps it provides a key to understanding where Ada's morals deviate from her personal goals, and whether or not she has changed. When she realizes what Wesker is about to do, place humanity in jeopardy, she briefly pulls off the mask of selfishness and wears one of selflessness. Though Leon is not privy to her actions to protect mankind, we see that deep down, somewhere beneath that mysterious, enigmatic exterior is a human being, one that wouldn't dare see such a terrible act carried out, even if it pays great money. Maybe Ada has changed. Then again, tricksters shift from archetype to archetype, don't they? I'm choosing not to focus on Resident Evil 6 in this video because I think a plot mechanic introduced in that title convolutes Ada's involvement a bit. Clones, doppelgangers, or Carla or whatever. After completing her scenario, players will probably find that Ada's character is generally consistent with her trickster archetype in that entry, but it didn't resonate with me on a story level. If anything, we're presented with a repeat of tropes we've seen from her character before, even if the character doesn't evolve in any meaningful way. I'm also not digging into the Umbrella Chronicles, Darkseid Chronicles, or Operation Raccoon City, since they all fall into the category of retelling or what-if spin-off scenarios. I think the finale in the remake of Separate Ways is a tip-off to what might be in store for Ada's character should she return in a new installment down the road. And believe me, I'm confident Ada will return. I'm surprised that Capcom hasn't dedicated an entire game to Ada at this point. What mask will Ada wear when she returns again? I'd argue many. For Ada to be one thing would be a tragedy, because it is in her nature to shift from archetype to archetype. But deep down inside, we know that Ada can't help but have some bit of ethical guideline within her. Maybe she'll return in the ninth entry, maybe the tenth. One thing I'm sure of, she's too fun of a character to leave on the sidelines. Only time will tell. See you around. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Give it a thumbs up or comment. Share it with your friends or survival horror fans. Be sure to check out my other videos about the Resident Evil franchise. I'll be back with more soon. Be nice to each other in the comments. Thanks for watching.